we're here at the Hay Festival in Segovia, and we've just had a discussion about women in architecture. Um, and I guess uh, I think it's a really good time for us to to talk about how the profession is changing and what we can do to to help um, women to progress and and become successful in architecture. So, uh, Francine, you you've talked about how you do feel conscious that you're a role model for women in practice. Can you talk about that responsibility? Uh, maybe first of all that you know for me it was never a, a thing to be a woman so that you know but uh, at a certain moment I, I accept because I really had such a strong passion that I wanted to be architecture and to realize my dreams and nobody could stop me even even because I the, even the awareness that I was born as a woman didn't matter to me because I wanted to continue but I'm very much aware especially also like uh, the research you did what was a kind of, uh, for me, uh, an eye-opener. I'm not sure if it's in the Netherlands the same, but in a way, what, what, what you did to research the position of women was kind of shocking for me even. So um, I'm very much aware that I'm a role model and I'm very happy, uh, because I'm very happy in my job and, uh, and the way kind of success I have. And I just want, yeah, I want to show that it's possible. And of course, I also know that it's more difficult if you're also, sometimes I say, was it difficult to be a, a woman? I'm, I'm not sure. I think it was not so difficult for me personally, but maybe to be a mother at the same time, to have three kids and to raise them. And, you know, in, in, in the Netherlands, they still think that's the task of a woman to raise the children, not of a father. Uh, so that was sometimes common, not the most easy job, but I love my children. <laughs> Martha, you you worked on the, the you work on the Pritzker Prize, which of course has had some been in the firing line of some controversy uh, or some discussions, some really heated discussions about women in architecture and how much they've been um, uh, recognized for their achievements. And also, you are the dean of IE School of Architecture and Design here, and um, and you are you know in some ways uh, there as a as a role model for young women in architecture in your school. Do you want to talk about your your position in, in these two? It's, it, it's really interesting because um, the Pritzker many times recognizes people who've had a full career when they're mature architects or towards the end of their career. And teaching and um, being on the administration of a school like IE, which is an international school, um, is the other end of the spectrum with, with young people um, in our bachelor degree or even our postgraduate degrees. Here at the school, we have um, more than 60% of our students in the bachelor program are women. They come from all over the world. And I feel an enormous responsibility to help them open doors to have a fulfilling career in whatever branch of architecture or whatever way they, they would like to practice. Um, I think the profession uh, has a lot to do to transform itself, but I also think the education does. And what I like to think about at IE is how do we break those traditional models that lead to the idea that the man is the master in, in an office or the maestro and should be the person in charge. So there are things like our studio uh, culture. Uh, we encourage students and we, we make tasks so they're working in groups and those groups change and therefore the dynamics of who's leading a group, what roles the students play within that group also changes so that they get an idea of there are a variety of positions. Um, there are other things we do in terms of internship programs, and I always try to encourage our women students to work in offices or to have the internship experience in an institution where they can see women as leaders, uh, sort of the same case of Francine being a role model. And I think by seeing these examples uh, through, through education, they're, they're small steps, but I think they can also be very profound steps when they're, when they're, um, when they're carried out over time and they, uh, and they add up over time. In terms of the Pritzker, I think the controversy related to uh, Denise Scott Brown, 
I think that that had a great effect on the jury. I, I think uh, they are the individuals on the jury certainly try to always be fair and make good decisions. I think the information and the response on the part of the public uh, gave them a lot to think about. And I, I've seen a shift in, in the way they look at architecture. Um, whether or not that can be translated into short-term term gains uh, that there will be women winning the Pritzker next year or the year after, that's something that no one, that I can't predict. It's, it's up to the jury. Um, and they have many, um, many aspects, again, of architecture and many objectives when they are looking at work. But without a doubt, um, the, without a doubt, consciousness is changing. And I think that's the first step. Francine, you run a very successful practice. Meccano has 150 um, people working um, under your, your leadership. I'm often asked whether there are any differences between how women and men in architecture work. I think your practice is 40% women. Um, do you observe any differences in, in their leadership or that influence uh, in the balance of your practice? Yeah, I, I, I don't know uh, <clears throat> because I've not been working in, in other practices. But I, I really, for me, it's important that the whole atmosphere is also pleasant. And uh, I know that my staff is also very uh, we, we don't make any difference between male or female it's totally not an issue and I think it's also for me very essential I don't need people who work just day and night uh, behind the computer I think I want also healthy staff so for me it's important that they can also take care of the children or can go home and of course if you really have to work harder for certain days you have to be there but it's not uh, because I think a lot of People think that architecture, you have to work. I'll do that 70, uh, 24 hours a day, but not the whole staff. <laughs> and it's also not good because then you cannot think. You have to rethink think, uh, things. You uh, you also have to see what's happening in the street or what, how the society is changing. You should be part of the society. Otherwise, you cannot serve the society. So I try to balance this, and that's possible. But also, I, I see also even a big change. If I compare to my own time, if I now look to also a lot of uh, male architects working in office who become father they also want to take one day off because they'll have the, the papa day the, the father day so uh, and then they have this mother day I, I never had all these things but you know it's also much more balanced I think also with, with the, the new generation is already taking care of that mm -hmm. that's what I see in the Netherlands mm -hmm. I don't know how it's in the UK but uh, I think these daddy days are becoming more common. I do see a lot more men who want to be involved and they hope that this discussion around women in architecture is going to unlock that for mm -hmm. them, that there'll be more flexibility in practice because many of them say that they don't really like the culture either. It doesn't fit with who they are. Um, Martha, what do you think needs to change? I, I think certainly time management. Uh, I think that's an important, uh, an important issue that would help everyone. Uh, I think we, in, in the profession, sometimes we hold beliefs that really aren't true. Mm -hmm. And this idea that if you work all night and if you're stressed before you hand in a project, it will be a better project. There's, there's, no, there's no proof of that. It could, and it probably very well is just the opposite. So I think that that's one thing. The other thing that I think is a belief that uh, sometimes is held by architects or by society, we often think that architecture is a very creative profession and therefore it's very free. And since we have these artists uh, doing things in their own way, they have enormous freedom. When in reality, even though we, we may see people all dressed in black and uh, being the cool architect, it is a profession that is very conservative. It, it's very conservative. It's very resistance, resistant to change. Um, maybe that's the nature of architecture, that it takes a long time to design, a long time to build. Uh, I also think it's because we're still looking to the past for some of our heroes. And that idea of, uh, again, of the architect as the individual author uh, who holds the truth and is the artist, uh, and therefore 
um, is it's co- the behavior and the culture is correct. I, I think we have to start changing those things and freeing up the profession and, and also doing a little bit more of introspective work to find out where are we holding these beliefs that probably are not doing the best uh, for recognizing and promoting the talent that we have within the, within the profession of architecture. Well, thank you both for talking to me today and um, in beautiful Segovia. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.